Recall that a singular value decomposition for a matrix A is a way of writing A as the product of three matrices. A square matrix U, that's actually an orthogonal matrix, a rectangular matrix sigma, the same dimensions as A, that's actually a diagonal matrix, and a square matrix V transpose where V and V transpose are both square matrices and orthogonal matrices. In this video, I'll walk you through an algorithm to start with the matrix A and find these three matrices U, sigma, and V. I'll also do one example, but I'm gonna postpone to another video explaining why this algorithm actually works, why at the end of it, we actually get matrices whose product is A and why the matrices U and V that we get are actually orthogonal. So for an M by N matrix A, how do we find orthogonal matrices U and V and a diagonal matrix sigma such that A is equal to U sigma V transpose? First, let's consider the case when A is a tall matrix. In other words, when M is greater than or equal to N. First, we're gonna find the matrix a transpose times A, notice that that will be an N by N matrix, and it'll actually be an N by N symmetric matrix, since the transpose of A transpose A is A transpose A transpose transpose, which is A transpose A, same thing as we started with. We're gonna find the eigenvalues of A transpose A. Since A transpose A is symmetric, these eigenvalues are all real numbers. But even better, as a previous video shows, any matrix of the form A transpose A has eigenvalues that are actually non-negative real numbers. So we have that these are all real numbers greater than or equal to zero. Now in this class, we'll only work with situations when all the eigenvalues of A transpose A are distinct. So I can call them lambda one through lambda n, and I'm gonna order them in such a way that lambda one is bigger than lambda two, is bigger than lambda three, and so on. More generally, in some examples, the eigenvalues won't all be distinct numbers. Sometimes they'll be a root of the characteristic polynomial that's repeated. And so if that's the case, we'll still write them all down. And if the root of the characteristic polynomial has, say, multiplicity three, we'll just write it down three times. And so in more generality, we'll just be able to say that lambda one is greater than or equal to, because there might be some repeated eigenvalues. Now, when we were diagonalizing a matrix earlier, we just used those eigenvalues for the matrix as our diagonal entries. But this time we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna use the square root of our eigenvalues as our diagonal entries. So I'm gonna call the square root of lambda i, I'm gonna call this sigma i. Notice that it's no problem taking the square root of lambda i since lambda i is gonna be greater than or equal to zero. Notice also that we still have the sigmas in descending order. These numbers sigma one through sigma n are called the singular values of A. And now I'm gonna build the rectangular diagonal matrix sigma by taking sigma one through sigma n along the diagonal and filling the rest in with zeros. If M is bigger than N, then the last few rows of sigma will all be zeros. To me, it kind of makes sense we wanna use the square root of lambda i instead of lambda i because lambda i is the eigenvalue for this product, which is kind of almost like doing a squared. So it makes sense the square root of lambda i would be more related to just a itself. Okay, so now we've got sigma, the middle matrix of the three. Next, let's work on v. So for step two, we're gonna take an eigenvector, V1 for lambda one, V2 for lambda two, et cetera, each of which has length one. 
If the first eigenvectors we pick don't have length 1, then we can just rescale them by dividing by their length to get an eigenvector of length 1. Now we're going to build the matrix V using V1 through Vn as its column vectors. Again, for our class, we'll only ever consider the situation where the lambda eigenvalues are all distinct and we just take one eigenvector for each of them. If you were to consider a more general situation when maybe say the first eigenvalue was repeated, so lambda 1 and lambda 2 were the same, then you would end up having to choose two eigenvectors for that eigenvalue in such a way that those two vectors were not only length 1 but also orthogonal to each other. And it turns out that this is possible since these eigenvalues came from a symmetric matrix, but that's beyond the scope of our class. Okay, so now we have built our matrix V, from which we can easily get V transpose. Notice that these eigenvectors are eigenvectors for the matrix A transpose A, which is an N by N matrix. So these vectors have dimension N, and so the matrix V will be an N by N matrix. And the last thing we need to do is to find our matrix U. So to find U, we're going to compute A times VI over sigma I for each non-zero number sigma I. Since the matrix A is an M by N matrix, when we multiply A by the n-dimensional column vector, we're going to get an m-dimensional column vector. And dividing it by the scalar, it'll still be an m-dimensional column vector. We'll have no more than n of these column vectors. It would be exactly n, except for some of the sigma i's might be zero. So I'm going to call these column vectors u1 through ur, say, where r is less than or equal to n. And I'm going to start building U, the matrix U, by stringing these column vectors together. Ultimately, I want U to be an M by M matrix, and I might not have enough columns to do that. So I need to fill out my matrix U with some more columns, M minus R of them to be exact. There are a few ways to do this, but in practice, the simplest thing to do is usually just to pick so M minus R columns at random, and then using the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization algorithm to make them orthogonal to each other and to the original U1 through UR columns, and dividing them by their lengths, if necessary, to make them length 1. So I'll call these extra columns after we orthonormalize them. I'll call them UR plus 1 through UM. There are a few details here that I'm sweeping under the rug. In particular, in order to do the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process, we need all of our columns together to be linearly independent. Turns out if you pick columns at random, usually you will get things that are linearly independent. If you have bad luck, you might have to do some repicking. There are some other ways to fill out the matrix U, but in the interest of keeping things short and simple, I won't go into those details here. In addition, as you'll see in the applications video, it doesn't actually matter a whole lot what the end of this matrix looks like. Okay, so to summarize, we build the diagonal matrix sigma using the eigenvalues of A transpose A and taking their square roots. Then we find V by using the eigenvectors for A transpose A. And then we find U by computing a times those eigenvectors divided by those singular values and filling out the matrix one way or another. I want to remind you that we haven't yet verified that this process actually gives us a singular value decomposition. That is, we haven't verified that u and v are actually orthogonal matrices and that the product u sigma v transpose actually gives us A. That'll happen in the next video. I wanted to do this for a tall matrix first where m is greater than or equal to n, because that way we could be sure that 
the number of eigenvalues we get for A transpose A in eigenvalues would be small enough to fit into our rectangular matrix sigma. Next, we'll look at the case of a wide matrix. Although it turns out that a similar process could be used when A is a wide matrix, that is, when M is less than or equal to N, instead, I'm just going to repeat what we did on the previous slide for the tall matrix B, which is given by A transpose. That'll give us B as a product of some U times some sigma times some V transpose, where the dimension of B is N by M, since it's the transpose of A, and the dimensions of U, sigma, and V are as follows. Now, I can write A, which is B transpose, as U sigma V transpose transpose, which is the same thing as V transpose transpose, sigma transpose, U transpose, or V sigma transpose, U transpose. And since V and U were orthogonal matrices and sigma a diagonal matrix, I'll still have orthogonal matrices here and a diagonal matrix here, all of the correct dimensions. Let's do an example and find the singular value decomposition for this three by two matrix. Step one is to compute A transpose A and find its eigenvalues. A transpose A is this product, which works out to this two by two symmetric matrix. To find the eigenvalues, let's write down the characteristic polynomial, which is given by the determinant of the matrix with entries five minus lambda, two, two, and eight minus lambda. Here's the determinant, which simplifies to lambda squared minus 13 lambda plus 36. When I factor this and set it equal to zero, I get that the eigenvalues of A transpose A are lambda one equals nine and lambda two equals four. So now I can write down my diagonal matrix sigma, which should also be a three by two matrix. Here it is. Recall that the diagonal entries, the sigma i's are given by the square roots of the lambda i's. Now let's move on to step two, finding the eigenvectors for A transpose A and building V with them. I encourage you to pause the video and work this out for yourself before going on. Here's what I get. So for eigenvectors, I have the vector one half one and the vector negative two one, but since those aren't length one, I'm gonna to wanna to rescale them by dividing by their lengths. The length of this first eigenvector is the square root of one half squared plus one squared that's the square root of five fourths or the square root of five over two. So I'm gonna take the eigenvector and divide by that length, which gives me the length one eigenvector, one over square root of five, two over square root of five. For the other eigenvector, its length is gonna be the square root of five, and so I can divide by the square root of five. Now I can build my matrix V by using these two length one eigenvectors as my columns. And I'm ready to go on to the third step, which is using the column vectors A, V, I over sigma I to build the matrix U. Here the V, I are the column vectors of V. So let me write down A, V, one over sigma one and a v2 over sigma2, those work out to these vectors. These will be my first two columns of u, and you might notice that they're already length one and orthogonal to each other, but I need to fill u out with a third column that's also length one and orthogonal to these first two columns. For this third column, I'm gonna start with the column vector one, zero, zero, although any column vector that's linearly independent from these two would do and then I'll apply the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process to make it orthogonal to U1 and U2. I'll omit the details, but this is the vector I get, 
which is in fact orthogonal to both u1 and u2. It's not length 1, so I'll just calculate its length and divide by it to get my last orthonormal vector u3. We put these three columns together and we have our matrix u and we finished our singular value decomposition using these three matrices. This video gave the methods for finding a singular value decomposition. It was a complicated process, but it will prove to have powerful applications.